All right, guys, welcome back to another Mob Bros video. Uh, today we have both me and Jacob here. We're gonna be talking about the rival knockout. This one's Jacob's, this one's mine. Uh, he's modded his a little bit, and mine's still stocked. So we're gonna talk about like our plans for them and the potential of them and how they're actually pretty good. The only thing we like about the knockout is I am a big fan. I think the knockout is probably the perfect secondary for me. That's why, for those of you who are following your Instagram, you saw me very excited once <laughs> once it was revealed that this was a thing. Because I absolutely, I absolutely love it. Because I have always sort of wanted like a really nice rival secondary. Because my my perfect secondary is something that I can use to defend myself if my primary goes down or I run out of ammo, but also has a little bit of a little bit of fun factor to it. Yeah. And so I used to I used to run a proton because I had I really enjoyed curving the discs around bunkers. And one thing that is really nice with rivals, at least with my upgraded ones, such as like the Nemesis or my Chronos, if I tilt them to the side, you can use their hop up to spin the rival round around the bunker and it's super fun to do. And so as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh yes, I need that. Please and thank you. And so we literally we drove all the way down to Nampa, which was a good like 30 minute drive to yeah. go to a different <laughs> Best Buy because the Best Buy that is near where I, we live only had the blue ones. <laughs> We're team red. <laughs> We're team red here. And I didn't want a blue one. And this was like uh, back when people were like first finding them and saying that they were at Best Buy. I was like, all right, going to Best Buy. And then I only found the blue one. And I was like, all right, get you Best Buy. I'm going to a different city. <laughs> And then I found the red one for $9.99, which is great. This thing, for only $10, is a beautiful pistol. And, like, even stock, they're not that bad. Like, honestly, I would use... Oh, yeah. They're I would use, I would use a stock one. I would use a stock one of these in a war. And, like, all the mods that I've done are just, like, little things that aren't, like... I, I say this is, like, a modified knockout because I haven't really done very much to it to change it from the stock one mm -hmm. because it honestly doesn't really need very much. Uh, I did I did these mods like a little bit ago, so I did these before people found out about like upgrade springs and whatnot. So I want to try to put an upgrade spring into it because I have broken the tab on the plunder tube just because I was stupid and I thought I I thought I had a bad air seal in the plunder tube because every time I, I primed it and I tested the seal it wasn't working, so I just assumed it was in the plunder tube, and so I took it apart to work on that. And it actually turns out that in the plunder tube, I have a perfect air seal. Perfect. To so good it pushed my thumb <laughs> off the front. But yeah, if I pull the trigger and then I hold just the plunder tube area, yeah. it's a perfect air seal. And I didn't even need to put Teflon tape or anything on there. I did pad the plunder head a little bit because this thing is quite loud, and like even the padding that I have added has just been squished so much that I need to even add more. Uh, but honestly, now that I've broken, I already broken the tabs and it's already really difficult to put together because of all the spring force, I may as well try putting an upgrade spring into it and see what kind of performance I can get with it. I have kept mine rival just because I like, I like rival and also I don't really have a need for a breach loaded secondary that can hit upwards of 200 with a spring upgrade and a, bra a good brass breach. I don't have a need for that really because usually Usually my secondary is also something that I use for like day play and whatnot. So you, usually before I would run a side strike that had a CBC barrel and an upgrade spring. And I was getting close to 100 FPS and it was pretty good. And it was a nice, yeah, Tucker has his fire strike. They're, they're good secondaries and whatnot. And they're really nice because I can have them as the backup that I need for like when we're playing in like competitive wars. But then also, if I want to just run like a small single shot pistol during day play, I can't. Now, I can't run this during day play at nerf because they, they have, have a rival specific yeah, day. They have a rival specific only night. But if Dart Wars was still around here, I could use this at Dart Wars during day play and it would be fine. It's hitting around 100 FPS because it's stock spring and whatnot. But I would like to be able to see how much performance I can get to it with fixing the air leak in the breach and then upgrading the spring because all the knockouts that I've seen people have upgraded the springs but they've also changed it to darts and I want to see if you can get this thing to be competitive FPS with like with other rivals. other rivals like yeah. if you're having a rival only war and mods are allowed and you have your like 
you have your overvolted rival blaster, you're like, you're upgraded Kronos and whatnot. Yeah. You're hitting like 130 to 150 and stuff with rival. And you want a secondary that can also hit that hard. I think that'd be really good because I love the knockout. Uh, I have yet to get a holster for this thing. So I haven't been able to run it as a secondary. We also haven't really gone to any wars recently. But that's sort of my plans. I can't remember off the top of my head which spring it is, K26 or K25, that fits in here. But then I've also seen, uh, who is it that posted that picture of the upgraded spring kit that you sent me? Might have been Worker? Might have been Worker, yeah. But there are there are upgraded springs specifically for the knockout that I might try and get if, if they sell just the spring itself, because I have no use for the, the breach and whatnot. And then upgrade the spring and then probably try and upgrade the seal. The issue with the breach seal is I've tried to put Teflon tape on there, but that caused my breach to not open when I hit the lever. And so I upgraded the spring and it still wouldn't work. So I could either, so currently I have a really nice, <laughs> a really quick breach opening because I have a really hefty spring in there, but I could try to put an even heavier extension spring in there and then I upgrade the seal there, which is what I might do if I work on this a little further so that way I can actually get a good air seal there because as you guys saw earlier when I plugged this all the air leaked out but it's such a short barrel that maybe with an upgrade spring it'll be fine with a bad seal but those are my plans for it because I really want this thing to be a nice pistol I know so many people hate the all the stuff that you have to do in order to get a fire rate but it's actually not that slow rate of fire and another thing that I really like is if you bring the fire strike back yeah when you run the fire strike as a secondary and you have it primed in a holster, that is sticking up. And so that's usually one of the reasons why I run a side strike instead of a fire strike is because this will catch on things and it causes problems and whatnot. And like fire strike, don't get me wrong, fire strike is a great secondary. If you're looking for a nice single shot secondary that's not too big, fire strike is your go-to. I like the side strike just because I like slide primed and also it's more compact. Yeah. And I, in my opinion, has a better comfier handle. Uh, speaking of handles, this thing is chunky, but like chunky in a good way. Chunky in a good way, yeah. It's a real solid pistol. Like it doesn't, it doesn't feel like I'm holding anything that's like humongous, but it could be better, I'd say. But it's definitely comfy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I removed all the locks, so I can prime this multiple times, deprime it. There's no safety. This can be opened further. I I don't get like any of the complaints that people have <laughs> about this thing because I absolutely love it. When you prime this thing and then push it back up. Not only is there less chance of you pinching your hand when you're firing it, it's more compact and easier to stow in a holster. And then also you have less moving parts when you're firing it. So it's honestly less complicated. And the functionality of being able to load multiple rounds with the stock spring, loading multiple rounds isn't very good, but that's my hope for upgrading the spring. Maybe I'll get better performance. But the, the biggest thing that I've actually done to this and you've seen this if you follow our Instagram, it's I've modified the hop up. So if I show you the stock one, it's a little rubber tab in there and like, it's all right, it does a job. But when I was just like playing around with the knockout, I wasn't getting like as straight of shots as I want to. And the big thing, I wasn't getting the curve that I wanted. And so if I fire this one, the stock knockout, and I hold it at like an angle with mine, they, they fire pretty much straight at like any angle, which for some people is fine and whatnot, then you can, Sort of hold it at an angle and fire it and it'll go straight but i i specifically want to be able to curve them around a bunker so i actually made a hop up out of a piece of pvc that's very similar to how the chronos hop up works and it works great i get straight shots when i'm holding it perfectly upright and then if i tilt it i can curve it around things and my hope is that if i put a bigger spring and better seal in here i can then get more curve and have lots of fun with it the only problem with the hop up that I've done is I am not able to use my Kronos dart barrel conversion that I have. Mm -hmm. The I have a dart barrel that I just pop into my Kronos. Oh yeah, Here's Tuck, Tucker's got his here. It seals with an O-ring into the original uh, Kronos barrel and originally it fit in here because the, it just pushed the rubber out of the way and so it fit in just fine. But now that I have a solid plastic hop up, it can't go past it and so it won't seal into the barrel properly but it's still i don't really care i hadn't i didn't <laughs> i didn't want this to be used for darts if i want a dart firing stuck in there i'll use like a side strike or something else but this fits really into the way that i play well the chronos so the knockout fits really nicely into the way that i play 
because I like to run very light loadouts, nothing too big. And so the Kronos for me personally is too big to use as a secondary because I have seen like I've seen plenty of people who've got like the magnetic holster and whatnot. And that works. Holster. It's called the holster. It's what a fun name, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. They disappear and they're no longer making it. I know. Right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've seen plenty of people have who have used the holster at like Dark Wars or Nerf and whatnot when we play. And they'll run the Kronos as a secondary. And that's fine for them. But for me, the Kronos is such a massive thing to have like on your hip or on like a thigh holster and whatnot. I don't like how bulky it is. And so I personally run my Kronos as a primary. But that, then again, we also play in indoor lore, so pistol primaries are a little bit better indoors because they're more maneuverable, and then also you don't have necessarily as long of like as long of like sight lines or ranges that you need to be firing a dart. So running a Kronos as a secondary is really nice because I can easily shoot people across the map with this because it's upgraded spring and has a tuned hop up and it fires absolute lasers. Like I've I've beamed kids with the rival rounds and it's absolutely amazing like i love upgraded the, the the accuracy of rivals on stock blasters they're not really that great but once you fiddle with the hop up and you get the power and whatnot that's why when i upgrade the spring i hope i get really accurate shots because once you upgrade the chronos you're shooting lasers I'm like this thing is amazing i love the chronos and when i run it as a primary i want to be able to have a backup because if I ever get caught with like a jam, which because I have the vertical mag instead of an angle, I do have jams occasionally. And also I, it runs 12 mags, so I'm going to run out eventually. And like whilst I can top load with the breach open, sometimes if I have the breach open and I'm putting a ball in and somebody rushes me, it'd be a lot easier to just reach for a secondary and easily take them out before I need to reload. It's so running a knockout would be amazing. And so that's why I'm really excited about the knockout and I love it. I'm going to start looking into some upgrade springs, try and get this baby lasers but I, don't know. I, I know that opinion is purely that of my own because <laughs> everyone loves their their chrono secondaries to their nemesis or Percy's or whatever but for me personally a knockout uh, knockout is a good secondary to a chronos. oh yeah because I run more springers and also just the knockout is great <laughs> I would even use the knockout to my as a secondary to my retaliators and whatnot because it just has that fun factor but also still being great. Because that was my main issue with the Proton, was curving and around things works great. But if you ever have to fire a Vortex like straight at someone, or like past 10 feet. Yeah, <laughs> like past 10 to 15 feet, and like they're just like somebody standing in the open, it's like, hmm, they're real slow. Yeah. <laughs> like even even like upgraded Vortex Blasters, which you really can't do much upgrades to them, they, the, the travel speed on them is so slow. <laughs> Like, one of the guys we used to play with at Dark Wars, like, joked around about how he would always just try and shoot the Vortex Disc out of the air because of how slow they were moving. Yeah. And we just have upgraded blasters that can easily do that. <laughs> but it's just, it's so difficult to try and, like, actually, like, shoot at someone when you're using a Vortex Blaster. Whereas this, if I get an upgrade spring, I can get nice, accurate, and, like, pretty quick rival round shoot shots, probably. But then also, with the, the hop up, I can spin them around stuff. And get curve sh shots from wanted. Yeah. Be great. Are we having a great time? Great time. Big fan of the Rocket. I I mean, I understand why people upgrade the way they do, and I think it's really smart. We're still waiting for someone to make a mag fed version. Yeah, like besides a proper one. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I think it's definitely cool. There it definitely I understand people's complaints, but oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I understand people's complaints, but I think they're stupid. Because <laughs> priming a fire strike, you have to pull this back. Yeah. And like, it doesn't take much work to just push that back forward. And with the locks removed, you technically don't have to. You don't have to push that back if you remove the little lock. And so it works without it. The problem is you're just moving so much more mass than you would if you just push that back up. And it's fine. And like, really, with a chronos, you're gonna have to open and close the breach. So like pushing that open and then like loading a dart isn't really that big of a deal. And I think it's funny how people, initially when the knockout came out, they're like, oh, it's going to take so long to, to load. I hate it. And then people started making a brass breach for it. And they're like, oh, I love it. <laughs> when it takes probably longer since 
popping a rival round in the year is literally putting like <laughs> yeah like the opening when you extend it like even when it's even when it's this wrong you just push it in like it doesn't take much work to just pop it in and close it so i don't really get i don't understand the complaints that people have and i think they're kind of weird and like pushing a dart into brass is going to take longer and I, I get that you get more performance out of it, so, like I said, I understand it, but it's not really that good of a complaint. Like, yeah. well, well, not has great. You've <laughs> also never been, like, to sh uh, a person to shy away from multiple step guns. Like, we have these. Yeah. <laughs> this is another step. We have to take it out and load it and put it back in. So it's not like it's a huge oh, thing yeah, for like, us. Uh, the old MIC pistols of the time were like a night finder with a speed loader. Yeah. Whereas that, you would have to, you'd have to prime it. And then you have to take the barrel out, rotate it, and then put it back in the coupler. Yeah. And like it's <laughs> it's the same, like the number of steps that you need to do doesn't determine the rate of fire. It's just how much you practice or how good like, you are with it. Yeah. And it's also just like how difficult the steps are. And like all of these are simple, just like, oh pull this, put it back up. Oh, pull that, put a ball in, close it. Yeah. Quite simple thing. Would I like this to have an internal magazine? Yeah. Am I upset that it doesn't have one? No. <laughs> I think a fine one shot is all you really need. Like I, 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 I used to run a four victory as a secondary because then it was good because if I ran into like multiple people in close quarters. I had multiple soft shots that I could just like mercy kill me. But then also I just I don't really need that. Like one shot is really oh, yeah. all you need. <laughs> if you need multiple shots to take someone out, then it's it good. Um, but yeah, this is, so this is K26. Correct. And I'm just trying to remember, I feel like that would fit, but I need to do more research. Yeah. Because also, if, if K26 does fit, K26 is only like 14 kgs. And I'm pretty sure the thing that I saw was like 16 kg for a strength of the knockout. And like, Might have been. that would be cool. Like, this is really easy to prime right now. And it's, oh, yeah. It's no, still, right. and like... Putting this thing together is so difficult because of how strong the spring is. But then you go and prime it, and you're like, oh, this is nothing. Does it? Can you do like the chrono strip where you keep it primed before? No, no, you cannot. Mm -hmm. That is the one issue. This thing has a jolt style catch. So, see, that's the thing. I don't get what took them so long to get around to make a rival jolt. Like, they they they're already making it was basically a second big shock. <laughs> yeah, the second and, big shock is coming. Around. And rival's been around since 2015, and this came out technically this year. It says 20. It says 20 on it. Mm -hmm. 20, 20 is when it's supposed to be. But I'm I'm starting to see trailers for like uh, nerf like advertising this. So I think I don't think we got like necessarily that early into the morning. Yeah, it's just like. I don't, I don't get what took them so long. It took them four, almost five years. Whereas the Jolt, Jolt's been around forever, and there's so many different iterations of it. Yeah, it's honestly not that difficult of a thing. It's not, and it's just sort of one of those things that felt like, like I of can, course. I can understand the, how it would be diff it's difficult to get like a rival ball going quickly while keeping it in a small package. Mm -hmm. But I think everything that they did was smart. I don't think front-loading... Would have worked very well with rivals. If no. you ever, if you ever tried to front load a chrono with a rival round, because of how big the rival round is, you're gonna, you're gonna have to push it multiple times. And then also, in order to get it all the way down the barrel, you're basically gonna need a ram round at that point. And people have stopped using ram rounds and nerf for so long since they figured out, oh, I can put a coupler on here with a speed loader, and then it's perfect. It just works so much better. <laughs> and so like. I, I literally like the breach thing. Uh, sure, it would be better if you could load, open the breach, and prime at the same time. But people have figured out ways to link the internal safety with this, so that when you pull down on this, this opens, and so it removes one step there. And then you can push that up. I, yeah, it would be cool to push this up, but close this. But I think it would be weird if when you pull that down, you then have to go up here and then push this back, whereas you can just put it out like that and then yeah. pop it. So yeah, uh, uh, my biggest complaint in the knockout is that it does not fit in a side strike holster. <laughs> does it almost? It almost. 
Yeah, almost. Kind of. So with mine, I'm I'm sanding out the in, so on the inside of the side it's got these little these like guide mm -hmm. rods. I'm just sanding those out in the hopes that maybe with enough I can just squeeze the knock out of it. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the side circle holster. I think it's a really nice holster and it fits it fits a, several things, which is nice. Oh, yeah, it fits it's a big a shot, fire strike, fire strike to the side strike. It's a plethora of different things. Yeah. But sadly, not the knockout. Because my hopes was that, oh, I'll just keep the side strike on my belt and then I'll just throw away the side strike, pop this baby in. But all my other, I, when we first heard about the knockout, I made a list of everything that I wanted from it, and all of them have comfort. Except for like one, and it's like a technicality. Mm. Well, I had it. I had a note on my phone. When I first saw like the promo leaked images of the knockout i thought it was super cool and i had a couple things i would have liked it to be able to do but it doesn't really matter i would have liked it to have a slide on top just for the more real steel kind of feel but this this makes more sense um i'm sort of want to do what i did with my chronoses have one really good with balls and one really good with darts yeah i thought about doing it only ten dollars yeah it's like hmm. yeah like that $10. one guy on reddit just keeps cutting off the bottom <laughs> and then filling it in making it really clean i, I pay ten dollars and i make uh, a manual breach mag fed one with a brass breach and it's like done yeah the biggest issue with making this thing mag fed is you would have the magazine here so you have the mag right here, but in order to get the least amount of dead space, you'd want the dart to sit here, which means you'd have to open a breach all the way there. Why can't you have back. the mag sit back here? Because that's how I was thinking of doing it, having it sit here. In and the trigger well? Sure, it would make the trigger well smaller, but it would sit here where it already opens. Yeah. Try and fit your finger. Nope, you're cutting off the mag. Am I? Yep. You would need, in order to make it comfortably fit your and like the, the honestly the biggest issue with knockout is the the breach seal mm -hmm. and if you make a brass breach and then you seal one of the brass into the pointer tube system you bypass that entirely and it's fine oh yeah so that's why people are able to get such great performance out of a, such a simple re rebarrel and so uh, i thought about maybe just putting like a 916 insert in there and then being able to load a semi second barrel in the front which i, I could do but like uh, as I said, I don't really have a need for a yeah. dark fire knockout unless unless I think of a cool mag loaded function that could be fun. But the only the only downside would be priming it and then having to move the entire breach because you wouldn't be able to do the spring. Yes, it's true, but it's sort of like you could just pull it out and push it yeah. back in. It's super easy with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, is, which is how I would do it, definitely, because that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, the, you top load when the breach is open. Yeah, which is, it works fine for your Kronos. Honestly, whenever I use a Kronos, I will load around in the chamber and I'll just pull the magazine out and load it. Oh, really? Yeah. I, for having a Kronos with top loading ability when the, mag is, when the breach is open, I hardly ever use it. The only time I use that is between rounds. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm in a round, I want to have this thing loaded up and ready to go with a ball ready to fire. And I just pull the magazine out and I just like jam it into my dark pouch oh, yeah. full of balls until it's loaded up and I'm just pop back in and I'm like, alright, cool. Yeah. And it's like something that I do with my retaliators as well. Mm -hmm. Which is how I get away with running one mag during some rounds. Yeah. And so I would probably just do the same thing with this and then have a man in three. Which I don't think would be that big of an issue because of a manual breach, your slightly slower rate of fire, you wouldn't be going through the darts as much. And this thing is super compact, like. Oh yeah, definitely. I've seen, I think I've seen 220 out of. See, I'm not so super mm -hmm. sure on their readings because all the ones I've seen have not been out of like official chronographs. I've seen them out of chrono barrels. And those are finicky. People say you can just divide by two, but that that's not right. It, my gut's telling me, Jacob's gut's telling him, you can't just divide by two. Sure, this one doesn't have the head, but it's not it's not half the length of a normal dart. It just isn't. And so therefore, the travel speed wouldn't be half the time between the sensors. 
You can't divide by two. It might get you like a ballpark, but it's not, you get 400, which 409, I believe is the error number on the chrono rail. And lots of people are just like, oh yeah, see that divide by two and you got, you're getting 200 FPS, which they very well could be. It's possible, but I'd like to see an accurate reading out of something that isn't a yeah, chrono barrel. That's, that's even if you trust the chrono barrel at high speeds to yeah. actually measure. Which I think the chrono barrel is a fine chronograph. It's fine for, like for 20 bucks. Yeah, but you can get a $20 chronograph, I feel, on Amazon. You can get that 3D printed one. Um, oh, yeah. Who's it from? Ezekiel? No, it's... It's the guy who makes the Accurato barrel as well. Which, shout out him, I really like the Accurato barrel. Um, I like little, that too. I'm not willing to pay however much I need to... If he releases a file, that'd be really nice. But yeah, he's not. Because we rude. just have scar barrels and they work just yeah. fine. I do like them. Like but, yeah, shout out to that guy, we can't remember his name though. <laughs> but you make a really nice chronograph, and so I would recommend people get that. Yeah, yeah. he's really friendly, he's good at responding. Yeah. It's cheap, and the files are out there, so you can print the files. So you can print the case, and then you can just buy, like, the, the yeah, electronic You can get the whole thing for, like, 15 bucks if you're willing to assemble it and wire it yourself, which it really isn't Honestly, too bad. Great deal. We may get that. Yeah. Soon. I'm probably going to get it after Christmas. Mm -hmm. We'll have a whole chronograph video, dart testing video. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the reason we haven't... Uh, had a lot of like gameplay videos or haven't really been making very much is just the the nerfing in our area is not the best yeah i i'm i'm tr i was working with mr nathan a while ago um because he lives oh, 20 minutes from us and he used to go to the nerf place i don't know if he's done it in a while he's been busy with work and whatnot but we were trying to set up like an outdoor war, but I don't know, once Dart Wars closed, a lot of the nerfing sort of went away, mm -hmm. which is annoying and sad, but I, I want to bring it back because we have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of ideas. We don't really have anywhere to test it at, mm -hmm. besides like a controlled environment, but it's always good to test your stuff in something you can't control the variables with. Your blaster might break or something like that. Yeah, I think gameplay videos are really nice to like show off how a blaster works, but the game that we play in, Nerf, has, it doesn't have a set chronograph limit, it's an ouchie meter. Ouchie and meter, it, and it's basically, different for every person. Yeah, basically if you do too good in a game, they're like, oh, you have to stop, which is weird, but I understand from a business standpoint, it just makes it less fun for us to play. That's why usually whenever Tucker and I go, we, he end up using his fire strike and I end up using my side strike. And we still get talked to by the refs, Oh yeah, but <laughs> they like us, so... We've had to go down to literally the stock side strikes that they supply, and then... And then, yeah, it's just yeah. problematic. So it's, it's hard to make, like, good nerf ones, but then we just can't use them. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, definitely went off on a little bit of a rant in that. That's all right, though. But I love the knockout. Knockout's and you good. should, too. <laughs> I like the knockout, too. Defin it's, it's definitely not, like, my optimal secondary, though. I prefer something along the lines of, like, a, f a strife semi-auto flywheel high rate of fire high fps multiple shots but other than that i think the knockout's great um i think we're done with this video mm -hmm. um so i'm gonna start doing my research on where i can get a nice good streak for this thing yeah. and then maybe maybe we'll show you guys a video of that Show you a couple mods that should be coming up. Uh, the one problem we don't have currently, we don't have a good way to measure the uh, speed of rivals. So even if we do get a nice upgrade spring for this, I fire rivals. I can't tell you exactly how hard it hits. Yeah. So we need that chronograph from mysterious no name guy. Um, Ooh, eighteen kg knockouts for no Etsy. Fuck. Hello. <laughs> Um, Who are you? <laughs> but yeah, if you like this video, go ahead and punch that like button. 
If you haven't already, subscribe. Leave a comment. We're we're always looking for feedback. So the issue with the knockout spring is how much pre-compression it has. Does it have a lot or a little? Paramount. Paramount. Okay. Which is why it's hard to put back together. Mm -hmm. So it's like the bird of prey. So that's why if if you're not if you're only going in to like take out the locks and whatnot, don't mess with the plunger tube. It's already got like a really nice air seal. And if you're just trying to do the breach and keep it at like the 160 to 180 range, you don't need to mess with the plunger tube whatsoever. Just leave it alone. It's going to cause you problems. I was dumb and I opened it up because I wanted to see what it was like. I wanted to see how the, the, <laughs> I want to see how the magic happened. The handle and the shell body are different pieces, right? So you uh, can yeah, open this good. part. Mod that part. Well, keep this intact. Uh, uh, I think I think they might be glued together, mm -hmm. but they do they are separate molds. Okay. So I think they have the standard like pins and glue that's on like the magnets and whatnot. So if you want, they do separate for like painting and whatnot, which is great. But the main thing is that it sort of has it sort of has internal kind of like the sledge fire and the hammer shot. Oh yeah where the shell separates and then there's an internal thing that you take apart. If you just leave the plunger tube spring all together, it's glued shut. If you just leave it all together, you won't have any problems putting this thing back together. But as soon as you do, you then have to fight all the pre-compression in order to put it back together. And so my hope is that I can find a stronger spring that does not have as much pre-compression. Because if... I don't think you need pre-compression in order to have like a really strong blaster. It helps. It helps? Yes. But I don't think it's necessary. And so, like, I, I have a bunch of pre-compression in my repellator. Yeah. You know that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, like, in the town claw, there's some pre-compression. And, like, pre-compression is good in order to get it stronger and have more compression. But if you can just have a, a stronger spring that's shorter, I think that's the better thing to go to. And so my hope is I can find a nice, strong spring to put in here. That does not have a crap ton of pre compression. But if we're wrong, if we're wrong about that, chime in. Wrong about what? Pre compression isn't necessary for power. <laughs> Even stock blasters have pre compression. I don't think it's necessary. Ooh, I don't want it to be like that. That's thick. Thick, but like open ended. I mean, Although I guess that would be good to thread it off. Uh-huh. Instead of having to take apart the plunger rod, which I've seen people break since it's hard to go back away. Yeah. But even that one we found before then. How many KGs is that? So I'm assuming that's their 14, and I'm assuming that's the 18. <laughs> uh, I'll agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at figures and one of them is much larger than the other. Uh 18 KGs for 898. Where are you shipping from? Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Everything's in Hong Kong. Chinese nerfers come over to America. Make <laughs> make everything easier. This slaps. Honestly, yeah. And like that, like that's not even like proper. Why? Why do they have so many? The reviews is not of this item. <laughs> There's one, and it says nice strong spring. Five points. Thanks, Barry. After you, good sir. Um, well, I started the outro a little bit ago, but Jacob had another thing to add, so we're gonna do do it again. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't already and you like our stuff, hit the subscribe button. Um, and. Please leave a comment, give us feedback, correct us, do whatever you want. Tell us we're doing a good job. We're sorry if we didn't respond to any of your comments recently. We'll try to be better at that. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, we like reading the comments. We read yeah. all of them. We've just been a little bit of a dry spell of content recently, and so we haven't been looking at the channel very much, but we'll try to look more and respond to comments quickly if there are any. Yeah, and instead of like old videos, this one actually is filmed in <laughs> December. <laughs> Instead of like the thrifting video where we were in flip flops and it's sunny. Yeah. Um, Date this December 2019. Uh, for the two days before Christmas. Um. So yeah. Uh, hope you like this video. 
I think it's been going on for a little bit, so. Oh yeah, we ran here for a hefty time. Tell us if you like the longer <laughs> videos or if you like the shorter videos, and we'll good old thirty minutes of ranting. Try to figure that out. Which is probably about the knockout. <laughs> and some of it we can crop down. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See ya.